Good morning. Well, I've got my big voice on this morning, don't I? Yes. Good to be with you on this uh, holiday weekend. We're delighted that uh, for all of you who are here in worship and a word of welcome to those of you who are viewing at home either this morning or this afternoon. We are delighted to have everyone here, especially because it is a holiday. Uh, we do call your attention to events that are printed in your bulletin that are coming up. It is a busy week ahead of us. Um, the uh, CWO is going to have their meeting uh, on uh, Tuesday. Uh, the Roundup will be at the Community Center on Saturday the 11th, uh, 20th anniversary of 9-11. Uh, the elders meeting will be uh, next uh, Sunday and then a number of other things happening in the immediate weeks, especially noting the congregational meeting on the 19th. Are there any additions to these announcements? I see Daryl standing because he's going to talk about. You know, we've got 14 desserts, and I, Mark, do you think that's an app on Saturday? So I, I won't pass that clipboard, but we are uh, short on help. So I didn't have, uh, and I left my clipboard in the car. So I'll, I'll bring it and I'll start on that side. I don't think I made it around to everybody last week. We especially need a fryer to fry the fish and the tenderloin and the fries. So if you want to do that job, uh, please check that. And then I do want to ask everybody to come next Saturday, especially to support our, 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 our pastor. And uh, uh, also we have some good entertainment. I think you'll enjoy the uh, main pearl imitators. I think she's pretty good, and she's at uh, 11.30 at Professor uh, Pete at uh, 11, so you won't have to wait that long. And then you can stay for lunch. So I'll get the clipboard. I'll start on this side this time. But we do need more help. Let's put that together in our mind. The pastor will speak, and then Minnie Pearl. <laughs> That's going to be a hard act to proceed. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, the CW lunch on Wednesday. That's because I can't read dates. <laughs> yes, Wednesday. Thank you. Any additions? I'm sorry. I just wanted to let everybody know that I'm handling the baby contest and the little Mr. and Miss contest for the Russellville Roundup Monday through Friday. And I'm going to have a Okay, thank you. Anything else on updates about events or activities? Any additions or corrections to our concerns list? Yes. Well, it's it's a praise. Obviously, Carolyn, we all know, just praises it every day. But um, she got an MRI result this week. The tumors in her brain are shrinking. She goes to the oncologist on Thursday for the other two issues of cancer. But it doesn't. She's she's walking with a walker. She's doing leg lifts with her weights on her ankles. You know, she's praising God all the time. So we're just happy for her and, and keep her in our prayers Thursday morning at 10.30. Is the restriction on visitation been lifted? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, because of COVID-19 and the Delta variant, they, there have been times you show up and they're not letting any visitors in. So it's always wise to call ahead. Yes. Um, I went and had the echo whatever you call it, sonogram, ultrasound, um, a week ago last Friday, and um, did not think it would be my pancreas that is, it's got a bunch of lesions on it, and I have to go back in six months to make sure, because it's precancerous right now. Yeah. And uh, I lost uh, my niece's husband last night to COVID. And he had his, they've all had their shots. So. Then let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship as Debbie plays for us.
Good morning. morning. Could you join me, please, in the call to worship? We are called to be people of faith in the midst of the world. We gather here as people who live in the world, and yet God has called us together. you pray with me. O Lord, you are our God, and we come in humility before you, for we are the creatures of your hand. O Lord, you are our God, and we come to worship you, for you alone are holy and worthy of our praise. O Lord, you are our God, and we come into your presence in need of your wisdom, patience, and peace. O Lord, you are our God, and we come in joy because you love us and have called us to be your people. So bless now all who gather here out of love for you. Amen. Will you please be seated? The invitation giving. In, in Proverbs, it's written, Honor your Lord with your wealth. As also as one man gives freely, yet grows all the richer, another withholds what he should give and only suffers want. Lord, may we look into our hearts and act in obedience to your word.
Let's bow in prayer. Lord, we thank you for your blessings that you bestow upon us. We pray for our congregation today that we may use these funds to perform the church's missions and programs and reaching out to others in help and need. We thank you, and in Jesus' name, amen. I invite all of the children to come forward for their time with Susie. Thank you. 
all of you. And what are you? Oh, Keith, you want mine? But I can be a super Samaritan. And then there's, you could color these um, band-aids that all, go all, all the way around. Or my thing is you take the band-aids and put them right on top of there. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. And it can remind you that you can help others and be like Jesus. Yeah? Can you help others and be like a super Samaritan? Can you all be super Samaritans? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We're all going to be super Samaritans. So let's, let's go to, the, to God in prayer real quick. We need to take these back and get all those out and work on your babies, okay? All right. Dear God, we thank you so much for this story. Um, help us to be more like you, Jesus, uh, to put on our Jesus shoes, to walk like you, to talk and love like you, and talk like you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Here's one for your band aid. <laughs> now just to show you that nothing ever stays the same now that you have learned and can do it with blindfolds on we are not going to sing the spirit of the living God this month we're going to sing instead Father I adore you as our preparation for the morning prayer Let us go before God in prayer. We are a seeking people, Lord, seeking special need, favors, opportunities, wishes. But when it is all said and done, what we are really seeking is you. There is within us empty holes seeking to be filled, a hungriness for acceptance, for forgiveness, for worth, for openness, for love for new life. We know that there is much for which we should be thankful. Our lives are richly blessed with material goods. We are fear from the fear of need and of want. Our physical well-being is amply provided for. And still there is a hollowness, a kind of sickness of the soul. And so we come before you, heads bowed reverently, anxious, hoping, seeking, we come more than anything else to find your presence with us, in us, amongst us. Give us eyes to see you at work in our world and in our midst. Give us the courage to, re out, to reach out to those around us in this place, for you are in the midst of us, and in loving, serving, and caring for one another, we will find you here. Through this church, let us live and work that we become your agents in this place and time. And finally, let us be wise enough to know that we find you less by our ardent seeking and more in our patient waiting. Help our faith to grow that so what we believe in our hearts will become the direction of our lives. All of these prayers we offer up to you in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
scripture this morning comes from Luke uh, chapter 10 verses 25 through 37 and it's the parable of the Good Samaritan. On one occasion an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself you have answered correctly Jesus replied do this and you will live but he wanted to justify himself so he asked Jesus and who is my neighbor in reply Jesus said a man was going down to Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell in the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Let us sing together thy word. I want you to imagine yourself driving a lonely country road, but seeing as how you live in the environs of Russellville, imagine yourself on a road. And it's that time of day where it's about the last light, where you are now depending more on your headlights than upon the sun to see. And and suddenly, you spot a car on the side of the road. The hood is up or one fender is sagging as if it's on a flat tire. You can see that someone is bent over uh, looking at whatever is wrong. So instinctively, what do you do? Is your foot already moved over to the brake to stop? Or have you already moved over to the far side of the road so you can sweep past as if you never saw a thing? Does it matter to you in making that consideration whether the person you see is male or female, white or black? Does the condition or make of the car influence you in any way? Well, you know the situation. We've all had such encounters, 
and I hope you have come upon such need far more often than you have been the one on the side of the road hoping someone will stop. And since you were paying attention uh, as the scripture was read, and since it's a story you already knew many times, you're not surprised of what I just asked you. You see, one of the ways that we can see the impact that Christianity has had on our culture is that even atheists in our country will consider that they ought to stop and help and be a good Samaritan. It has become ingrained in our culture that we ought to. Of course, most of us do not, and we can give very good reasons for not doing so. But the issue that we ought to do still nags at us. And when we start listing all of the reasons for not stopping, we're usually reassuring our conscience. Let me ease your mind. I did not select this parable as the first of four we will look at this month so that I could beat you up about all of the occasions that you, like the two in this story, pass by on the other side. Rather, I chose it because it is so well known. We probably could have dispensed with the reading of the scripture because you know this story so well. I chose it because it shows the peril in reading the parables of Jesus. So with that in mind, let's back the sermon truck up a bit and reset the stage. Just what is a parable? If you made a visit to your local dictionary, you would turn up the following definition. Parable, noun, a simple story used to illustrate a moral spiritual lesson as told by Jesus in the Gospels. Synonyms, allegory, moral story, moral tale, fable, lesson. Only that's not at all adequate, because simple story is not adequate. A parable, at least those told by Jesus, had three distinct characteristics. First of all, it paints a very vivid word picture, and not just any picture, but one that would immediately be apparent to his audience. As an example of this, you know the story Jesus told about uh, the shepherd and his sheep and one gets lost. That might very well have been told with a herd of sheep and a shepherd in attendance right where Jesus was saying it. And even if there was not a single sheep in view, the audience was so familiar with shepherding that they knew exactly what the perils were in the story. The second thing about a parable is that the conclusion is obvious. Again, as an example, the parable of a sheep Everyone in the audience at Jesus' time would have known that the shepherd was personally responsible for every single animal entrusted to his care. So, of course, he would have sought the lost one. Third characteristics of the parables of Jesus. They were not supposed to be parsed infinitely. That is, we immediately want to translate this and make it applicable. That is, the sheep are the people of Israel. The lost one is a believer who has forgotten the faith and wandered off on his own. The shepherd is Jesus who seeks out even those who wander from what is known as truth. A parable is an obvious lesson that deserves to be taken at face value. With that in mind, let's look again at this familiar story. And let's start with what is not obvious to us. As we hear the story, the heavies are not the brigands who assaulted this victim and left him as dead. No, the black hats are worn by the Levite and the priest who upon seeing the victim pass by on the other side. Well, we have some idea of the word priest and probably generalize it into clergy. While some might think that the Levite was probably someone who either made or wore Levi's. To, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Always enjoy a joke as soon as someone tells me about it. <laughs> to the audience of Jesus, the priest was a person who served the temple in Jerusalem. And the role of the priest was to take the offerings which the people brought to their God and to place them before God. The priest served as the connection between heaven and earth. The Levites were those who assisted the priest in these spiritual matters. 
to the audience of Jesus, these are the holiest of men. What do we expect of our godly leaders? We expect them to stop, to give aid, to take the risks, even if we might not do it. If I had called in this morning and left a message that I wasn't going to be here today because on my way down here, I passed it, a stranded person, realized they needed medical attention and drove them down to the hospital in Greencastle only to find out that they were full with COVID patients and I needed to take them on to IU West and Avon. You would probably have been a bit annoyed that you went to all the trouble to come here and I didn't make it, but you would approve the Good Samaritan-like actions. Of all the people on the road today, we think those two should have stopped. But not the people who heard Jesus tell the story. Judaism has very strict rules about purity. And the significance of purity is that if for some reason you are impure or unclean, then you cannot take part in the religious activities of Judaism. That is, you have by your actions placed yourself outside of the community of faith. One was if you had contact with a Gentile. And since they could not tell who the victim was, and the other was a contact with a dead body, and this guy looked dead. And so the priest and the Levite did actually exactly what they had taught the people to do. They passed by on the other side so that they would remain ritualistically, ritualistically pure. The audience also knew that what was the proper attitude about Samaritans. The Samaritans were a people despised by the Jews because they were made up of a mixture of survivors from the northern tribes which had been swept away by Assyria. You might remember in July we told the story of Jonah and he went to the city of Nineveh which is the capital of Assyria. And the Samaritans, these people who had remained behind and intermarried with people who were not Jews, had the temerity to set up in their capital as being the true site for the worshiping of God rather than Jerusalem, which is a few miles to the south. So for a Jew who would duck across the street rather than to walk on the same sidewalk with a Gentile, to see the hero of the story being a despised Samaritan made this story shocking. The people hearing Jesus and a Samaritan is the total opposite of the priest and the Levite, whose role in the story are to be the best of the best. If we don't readily understand all this, the story does not have the impact it had on Jesus' audience, which was to surprise them and to shock them. Still, there's another thing that affects how we understand the story, and that's the context in which it is told. You will note that the reason this story was told was in answer to a question by this lawyer, who is my neighbor? Why is that important? It is so important that Jesus takes the time to respond with the story. It is because the lawyer is trying to find out what are the limits Remember, he started all of this by asking a religious question. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus, you will notice, takes it as being a sincere question. And he turns the question back to the lawyer. Now, it's, it's kind of like he's saying, well, why are you asking me about the law? You're the lawyer. And the lawyer says, with two scriptures, he responds with Deuteronomy 6.5. You are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And Leviticus 19.18, love your neighbor as yourself. You will note Jesus affirms that as a good answer. But that's not enough for the lawyer. He presses the question. And I think what the lawyer really wanted to know is what it meant to love your neighbor and how many people are my neighbor. If my neighbors are a circle I'm in, how big is that circle? Where are the limits? See, the Jews had an answer to that. The circle is very small and it's very tight. It consists of us. So if the priest and the Levite had seen the victim's clothing, they would have known whether he was a Jew or not because you could tell a person in those days by what they wore. And they would have stopped. 
When Jesus makes it a Samaritan that stops, he throws a monkey wrench into this finely patterned and closely defined circle of responsibility. But notice this. We make a hero out of Samaritan. Jesus doesn't. He just paints a word picture as an answer to the lawyer's question, and he ends the story by asking another question. Who acted like a neighbor to this victim? And the lawyer says what is obvious, the one who stopped and gave help. And Jesus says, go and do likewise. Hmm. Why don't we stop? Many reasons. Safety is certainly a reality. Not caring? Mm. But not caring as in not seeing ourselves in their situation and hoping someone will stop. Or in today's world, when we know everybody has a cell phone, we don't have to stop because they already are calling somebody, and so we can just go on by. But let's go back to the beginning. What was the original question? What must I do to inherit eternal life? Answer, just what you were taught in church. That is, be a good Samaritan. Does that imply you'll go to heaven if you stop and help somebody on the side of the road? Does it mean you won't get to heaven if you pass by on the other side? No, both answers are too simplistic. And I've decided my answer comes from Fred Craddock which is not a bad answer to come up with. Because if you don't know, Fred Craddock was the best known and the most respected disciple of our time. Craddock sees in the lawyer's question a person who is more interested in verbal jousting than he is in changing his character. And it is proven by how the story ends. Jesus does not say, now do you understand? Rather, he says, go and do. And oh, the likewise presented by the Samaritan. Think about what the Samaritan did in his little act of mercy. He sees a problem, he stops, he gives first aid, he transports the victim to where more care can be given to him, he pays for that care, he leaves money to care if future care is needed, he redirects his travel plan so that he will circle back to follow up to see if this man has any other needs. No wonder we don't stop and play the Good Samaritan. We ain't got the time or the resources, thank you very much. It is not that Jesus is presenting a prescription of aid that we are to follow step by step. Rather, he is painting a picture of care in depth, of neighborliness that goes all out, of love that costs. And like Jesus will say, especially in the Gospel of Luke, which by the way, the Gospel of Luke is from the beginning to end a radical call to a whole new way of living in which the beauty and wonder of the kingdom of God is seen by the actions of those who claim the king. As Jesus would say in Luke, go and do likewise. Amen. Our response is I have decided to follow Jesus on page 602.
This is, if you're not aware, a holiday weekend. A lot of people are taking it as a time to take some time off, to do something different. The purpose of holidays is, in part, as a time for us to refresh. It's like on a hot day when you've been working and you need to get out of the sun and you need something to drink. You get some refreshment. I suggest to you that you're coming here on a Sunday, especially a communion Sunday, is out of your need for spiritual refreshment. There may not be a lot to eat and drink, but it is seen in its value to you of what it represents. We come for a refreshment of our spirits, a renewal of our souls, a reawakening of our commitment. We come because we simply need something from outside to renew and refresh. So today, as you take this bread and this cup, may it be reminded to you of how Jesus is here to refresh and to renew. For I received from the Lord what I now deliver to you, that on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread, and after giving the blessing, he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, the cup took the cup and said, This, this cup is my blood. blood. Do this in remembrance of me. In remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Father God, you have called us to be a people of your own self. And so help us to unify in spirit and in purpose, to do the things that you have appointed us to do. And this includes partaking and participating in the Lord's Supper. Since this is your body, the church, we know the bread and the wine, to think about these symbols, the body and the blood, both poured out as offerings. And so in spirit of unity, we now partake the wine and the bread.
Let us pray. Lord, you will perfect that which concerns us. Nobody is luckier than we are, merciful God. We are grateful that we have gotten to know you at all because so many people go their entire lives without ever seeing your light shining brightly. Heavenly Father, we ask that you use us as the light, as a beacon on a hill, to guide others toward your truthful word. Through us, we hope that someone can be touched by your grace, and we hope that we can be touched by them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I hope that you have been refreshed by this time together. And I pray that you can take whatever you have found and enjoyed in this time out with you into the world. We are placed here to worship God. We are placed in the world to serve God. May you go in peace and serve the Lord. So we can stand and join in our full benediction. Mm -hmm.